All right, so the only thing getting bit tonight for me is the big old Beast Coast Miyagi. What is happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I hope you're having an amazing day. I am because I'm thinking of fishing lures today. Now, what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of something that when I look down in the water, I look at the bait moving through, I think, man, that thing has to be a fish catcher. I'm sure you all have a bait like that. You throw it out and just think, oh man, I'm gonna catch so many fish on these. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But still, the premise is there that it just looks so good in the water. And for me, that is a paddle tail swim bait. These things look incredibly lifelike in the water. They're a nice soft plastic, so if a fish grabs it, it's not a big hard piece of plastic and bill and all that. It's very natural. The profile mimics a bait fish. Like, to me, it seems like you should be able to throw these all the time and catch fish. Now, I understand these are situational and they're not always the best bait to throw. But the big thing I have noticed is that not all paddle tail swim baits are alike. There are some swim baits I have drastically better luck on than others. Of course, a Kitek, everybody knows about those, they're amazing. But today I wanna to talk about the Beast Coast Miyagi. This happens to be a 4.75 inch bait. They come in three packs. They retail for $6.99 on Tackle Warehouse. That's where I pick up all mine. I'm not sure if that's where I picked up this cold from or not, but I'm getting some. And these come in 13 colors. I picked up a couple. I got the Beast Coast Shad, very natural, clear color. The Dope Gill, awesome little bluegill imitation. We'll take a closer look at these, but finally the Pro Pearl. And that's what I've been using to imitate Shad on my local lake. It's a little bit dirty, dungy, yucky water, so the white stands out pretty darn well. So the question is why? Why a Beast Coast Miyagi over something like a Rage Swimmer or a Kitek Fat Impact? I've used those and they work darn good. Well, I'll tell you why. And the first thing that I look at for any swim bait that usually sets one apart from the other is gonna be the action. The first thing I noticed about these, I was fishing them in warmer water earlier this year in the summer, is that the tail wobble is very natural. Some of them will kind of have this flippy thing going on when they have just a real little thin, tiny body. It's like kicking around. And some baits have just a more subtle flopping action, which is good as well. And depending on the situation, those can be good, but for an all-round bait, this has a very good natural swing to it. But the thing I recently noticed about this is the cold water action. Yeah, you look outside and the leaves are jumping off the trees like squirrels to a corn cob fest. Yes, even in cold water, this thing has a very nice tail action on it when you're just barely crawling it on the bottom. A very good way to get bit in these cold months. On top of that, it's got an awesome side-to-side -side wobble. So when this bait's coming through the water, it does this number. As you're bringing it in, it's got a very cool little side-to-side -side wobble. Looks like a little bait fish that's kind of struggling. Ah, I'm barely hanging on. Now you can see I have mine rigged up on a little belly-weighted hook. This was a 5 aught. It was what I had. I picked up some 6 aught, which is very nice of them. They put that on there that they recommend a 6 aught belly or keel-weighted hook. Awesome for beginners out there that pick up these and are like, I don't know what to put it on. Well, use what they tell you because a 6 aught would be a little bit better than this. But at any rate, what I was getting at is you don't have to have these rigged 100% perfect. There are some swim baits out there that if you don't have that hook 100% dead center, the action of it's all messed up. It'll kick over to one side and swim like this or have a weird wobble to it. I've had these messed up just a little bit and I'm like, well, I'm going to try it. And they still swim very well. But how do they hold up? Well, for durability, let's take a closer look. The durability. Overall, the durability on this thing is very good. I happen to fish all mine on a belly weighted swim bait hook like they advise. I really like fishing it this way anyway, in case I'm around any brush or grass, you just don't have to worry about getting hung up. I also like bouncing this thing off the rock and anything I can do to hide that hook and open hook will get caught up in the rock. I do notice that these have a little bit better chance of skimming along and bouncing off of them when I'm fishing riprap. So the back, of course, the back is one of the first thing that gets tore up on baits and then that hook tends to fall out. Um, I noticed the back lasted on this pretty darn well. I had probably eight or nine fish on mine um, before the foot hook started falling out, you know, when I was casting and such. But overall, pretty darn good durability. There's some of them out there that you'll catch a couple fish on it and this back is completely wrecked and that hook has really trouble staying up in there. With this, even if I do wreck kind of that middle part where the hook is in here and it rips up that middle, I can take that hook and just kind of offset it to the side and it doesn't even mess with the action of the bait. It still swims along nice and straight. What about the nose of this bait? Well, the cool part about the nose of this bait is it's nice and bulky. The actual cavity goes back to here, but this whole part is solid good head. And that's important because a lot of the baits out there, when you put that screw lock in the end of the nose, it has a chance to rip out either when you catch a fish or when you cast. If it's just got a real tiny little pointed head, you rip that out and then it's done. I hadn't had an issue with that again until I caught probably seven or eight fish on the one. I had a little issue with it and I just took the screw lock instead of being dead center. I just moved it up towards the top of the nose and the head and was able to catch even more fish on it. So for me, anything I can do to make a bait last longer is very important 
and I appreciate that. But once these get all tore up, don't throw them out. You can still do something with these baits. Now this happens to be the gill color, and this would go perfect on a swim jig or a chatter bait. So after that head gets all tore up, or even the back here, if that gets all tore up, don't throw these away. You can clip this off right here, and you'll notice that's the perfect size for a swim jig or a chatter bait. And this tail is awesome. Now you might need to trim your skirt a little bit to make sure that tail is kicking, but I tell you, this thing would still be a killer trailer, or even if you wanted to put it on, as a whole, that's going to give you a nice, big, bulky looking presentation if you're trying to get that big bite. Yeah, looking for that big bite, see? Speaking of the profile, let's see what that's all about. So, last but not least, what about the profile of these? Well, as I talked about earlier, the Kitek or Rage Swimmer, you can see there they're pretty much the same size, 4.75 inches. But when you look at them from the side, it's a whole different look. This is that more longer, skinny bait fish look. This has that nice rounded belly, more reminiscent of a shad, and I think even better at imitating a bluegill. It's got a little bit more of that horizontal, girthy, tall action to it. And I'm definitely a fan of that looking a little bit different because everybody's throwing these. I don't really know anybody around here that's throwing these. Now on top of that, it's not an oversized bait. Now I don't throw any of the big, huge, you know, Huddlestons or any of that. Those are great. I've just never really got into that game. I know they catch a ton of fish. I just haven't done it. This is a good gateway bait. It's not the little tiny swim baits, but it's not a big, huge Huddleston. It's kind of an in-between. It's a good bulky body size that catches better than average fish. You know, something like a little tiny Kitek at three inch, you're gonna catch all kinds of stuff on that, and that's not necessarily bad. But the good thing about this is if you're a newer angler, looking to get in just to a little bit different type of body style before you go up into the seven, eight, nine inch big swim baits, this is a good bait to start out with. I know a lot of anglers really like to use the small swim baits and they just kind of get thrown off when they look at something like this. It's kind of bulky, but don't be afraid to throw this. It's a good looking bait with a good profile and it mimics the bait pretty darn good. The last thing about this profile that I like is the belly. You open that baby up and you can see they've already split this. So this isn't one big heavy solid piece. The actual hard body part is really right here in the head and then it gets skinny and tapers down. Now this is a modification that I'll do on a lot of my baits is have that belly cut. That slit in there allows that hook to slide all the way up free of the bait like that. That's what you want. You want a big gap between the hook and the bait. Now this is a little five aught. I've actually had to take these and put a little extra slit in there. But if you use a six aught, which pushes that hook back, it really gets that hook up above the bait. And that is something you want to pay attention to when you're fishing a swim bait. So the more room you can get between those two, the better chance you've got for hookup. And these belly weighted swim baits aren't the best hookup ratio to begin with. So that's why I always leave the hook on mine, just laying on the top of the bait like that. Unless I'm in a bunch of brush, I'll just back that off and text pose it like that. That way it's good and weedless or woodless. Whatever you're fishing it in, it doesn't get caught. But enough of listening to me talk. I don't know if my voice is gonna make it that long anyway. Let's take a look at this thing in action. Fish and friends, we are out today after a 43 degree cold swing that's right, in 12 hours, the temperature fell 43 degrees here. So, oh, oh, there's a fish hiding right under that rock. Grabbed it. Darn it. I was gonna say, I wonder if they're even gonna be chasing any sort of moving baits today. We're gonna bring this by a little slower. Got him. Got that fish. Followed up, threw it in, gave him just a little bit of time, slower. Nailed him with the old Miyagi swim bait. That did awesome. Oh, look at him. Something took a chunk out of him. I don't know what. Oh my goodness, and his jaw's all gnarled up. Good golly. This little fella has been through the ringer. There we go, got him out. Oh my goodness, this guy has been tore up. He's got a broken gill. Something ate the side of him. Wow, messed up jaw. Good Lord, but he is still kicking very lively. Still got a decent little belly on him. I'm telling you, these bass are resilient, tough little fighters. I'll let him go and I guarantee he'll be off without any issues here. He's gone. There we go, first one of the day. Nothing big, nothing big, but it is a fish on the swim bait. He smashed it. There it is, number one on the day, hungry little fish. We'll let him go. Oh, there he goes. There we go. Finally, staying away from the grass and we find some. That's a better one. There he is, all right. 
got one on the old swimming. That's two on the old Beast Coast Miyagi. Let this guy go. I'm going to have to toss him just a little bit. He's off. All right, so the only thing getting bit tonight for me is the big old Beast Coast Miyagi.